Hey guys, what's going on? I figured I would put my knowledge to use and share how to make maps for Half-Life and other Gold Source games. Um, if this was five to ten years ago, we'd be using a program called Valve Hammer Editor, but now we can just use uh, what's called Jack or Jack Hammer, some people call it. So nowadays, especially with new games coming out like Codename Loop, uh, which can use maps from the Gold Source engine, so this is still pretty relevant. Uh, so with Jack, you can just go to File New, pick your game that's set up, and it'll load the properties here. So you get this default room properties window. Now if you hit cancel, it'll just give you uh, a blank map, but we're going to hit OK, and it's going to use all these default settings. We don't need to worry about any of this, but here's what it's going to do when you hit OK. It prefills a room for you here. And we have Gordon. Um, so let's take a look first. What's the deal with the four screens? So obviously you got the 3D, you got the top view, and you have two side views. So this is side and front, which are just basically, uh, it shows you the, the, you can see here, X, Y for top. These are the coordinate views. Y, Z, X, Z. And you can change these. So if I wanted uh, two top views for whatever reason, you could do um, switch that to X, Y. But there's no real point in changing these. If you wanted uh, two 3D views for whatever reason, you could. But again, this is no real point. So let's put that back to front. And then likewise with our 3D view, you can do wireframe. Or you can do just sort of like a, it's called filled polygons. There's also textured polygons, which is the normal one. And then there's the 3D shaded textured polygons, which kind of gives it like darker shaded walls. It kind of lets you know which uh, direction you're looking in based on the shading. And we can keep this. Um, you'll notice there's a grid. And um, you can zoom in using the mouse wheel. Um, you can change your grid settings with this uh, plus and minus up here. Um, I like to just keep it where a wall fits in the grid like this. Now, if we were using Valve Hammer Editor, it would, the first X tutorial video would be to go into Tools, Options, and set up all of these different things, which is pretty annoying. I've had to do it many times in the past. But with Jack, it kind of gives you some gives you some obvious prefills that are helpful so we're gonna leave it alone and um, today we're gonna all be focusing on this here this is the map toolbar um, so if you go to tools or rather wind let's see view screen elements map tool map tools bar so we can turn that off and on so if you ever lose it this is where to come um, we'll also briefly look at this right hand panel these are actually three different windows themselves in this little cascade button will pop them out there like that this one here and this one here so this is your textures see how it's kinda long we can put that like that this is your objects window and we'll go over what each of these are later and this is your vise groups um, so what we want to do is we can actually dock them back in here but just it's just important to important to know that there are different windows. But if you lose those, you can go to View, Screen Elements, and that's uh, these right here. So we bring that back. Yeah, see how it's separating now. Okay, that's how we want it. So yeah, you don't really need to mess with those, but just important to see that there are three different ones so over here is our map tools bar and this is um, you'll see they're color coded so red is sort of your 3d or <clears throat> 3d and 2d selection and viewing uh, first one is so you can hover over them and see the names and the shortcuts so if you like using the shortcuts you can just do if I wanted to switch back to the arrow here, which is the selection tool, I could do Shift S, and it and it and it takes uh, selects it for you. Uh, this is one's pretty obvious. It's just selecting your 
brushes, which is your 3D geometry is called brushes, and your entities, which is like anything other than that. Guns, ammo, this one's called, you can see down here, info, play, or start. Every map needs an info, play, or start. Um, next one is this uh, magnifying tool. So, you know, you can zoom in with the left click. Right click is to zoom out. Doesn't do anything over there. Um, but you really, if you, you can just you zoom in, zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. So you don't really need to use the magnifying glass that much. Even with the selection tools, you can still do that. Um, also, so you can do Shift G for that. Camera is important. That lets you move around in 3D space. So when I have that selection, the, the left click uh, allows you to move around. And then you'll just like in in game, you'll use WASD to fly through, like if you were no clipping. Because you always want to kind of focus on the area that you're working. Um, but uh, you can actually, with the selection tool, you can just press Z. And that kind of locks you into this mode. And then when you're done, press Z again. So in a way, you can kind of mostly stay using the selection tool. But I kind of use both because uh, this one's a little more less permanent than the Z button. Um, the right click I don't ever use, but it's just sort of like a up and down, left and right in one sort of plane. Um, but I prefer to use the left click so I can just fly through. The next one is this entity creation tool. You see it has a light bulb because every map has a light. I know there's one generated in here somewhere. So every map should have a light, otherwise you're going to be in a dark room. Um, and anyways, this one is the block creation tool. So that's how you would, um, over here in your 2D, you can start building your map. Like that. Now, something to know about uh, if we're talking about this window here, the new objects. So what the two blue ones do is it, it alternates what's appearing in here. So when this is set to entity creation tool, you can come in here and choose your various entities. For example, here's a hound eye, monster hound eye, and then I can just click it into the map. And then I can go back to the selection tool. If I want to rotate him, I can, and we'll look at that later. Um, but moving over to the block, uh, we'll, we have various objects. So if you want to build a wedge, a cylinder, spike, sphere, rock, arc, or arch. Um, so usually I just prefer block unless I like really need a cylinder. But you can see it created, creates a cylinder automatically for you uh, based on the dimensions you put into the 2D view. Camera, move around, okay. Um, there are other categories normally, or you can set them up. I know there's like ways to put prefabs, but right now we're just entities, primitives. The next set uh, are for the textures. So once you have a block in the game, See, I always do that. So we want to make sure you set that back. And you see I lost my window, so we're going to bring that back. Uh, objects, there it is. Okay. And I like it right there. Okay, so we want to make sure that's on block. Put in a block here. And from here, we can bring up the texture application mode, which you will be using a lot. Um, what that does is it brings up a window that looks like this, surface properties, and it's really a more intricate uh, window. It's a higher, better version to the one up here, which was called the texture bar. So in the texture bar, I can choose all my textures. This is a window you'll be in a lot. So you, this is all the textures from Half-Life. But when you click on the texture application mode, you have more abilities here. So, for example, I don't want to use this lambda symbol. So what we'll do is go back to selection, select the whole thing, 
And then from there, you can pull up this texture we searched previously and apply. The next one is apply current texture. It's just like a shorthand. So let's say we have, I'll just grab one of these waters here. Now I have the block and then I hit the apply current texture and click out and you see it changed the block. Uh, this one is called the apply decals. Um, so when it comes time to putting decals in your map, uh, like this, uh, this one says Scorch 2. Uh, we'll just use that to pop it on the wall. So if you want any effects like blood or whatever, signs, it'll just imprint it right onto the wall itself. And then, of course, we can click in there and delete those. Uh, then the yellow ones are also very, I use them all the time. So this is a clipping tool. And what this allows you to do so we can zoom in on our block to that we're working on. Okay, I like to always be focused on where I am. Um, and then I can change, if I wanted to change my grid settings a little bit to match the block, see how that changed? So it's kind of in, in line with the geometry that I'm working with. The um, clipping tool is useful because I can go like this and change the shape based on based on the, uh, the direction of the clipping tool. Uh, we'll look at that in detail as well because there's other things you can do with that. But you can kind of see why I use the block tool versus the other uh, geometry types because I can kind of create exactly the geometry I want and not rely on the guesswork uh, from the other geometry types. Um, this is the vertex manipulation tool also very useful so if I want this what this does is allows you to basically transform the geometry in uh, like real time so if I, you, you can make complicated geometry that way um, we'll do we'll, control Z it's undo and finally we have this path tool and that is for like making uh, uh, for tra uh, like making trains in half-life or you know rail carts and stuff it helps with that and um, so that is uh, pretty much the basis of uh, this this toolbar and we can look at some more things uh, next time and thanks for watching